Welcome everybody. So I got a request from one of our students in the live audience and that student said, we need some better music. Okay, no problem. I know many of you have been with me now for many sessions of these courses and I know you're tired of that music. So here's a promise to you. Tomorrow, I will switch it up. How's that? Tomorrow, as we're getting ready for class, as we're getting everything fired up here in the studio, we'll play some different music. I promise you that. Well, it's great to see everybody here on time. And we had a request to do something that I promised you we would do every one of the sessions now. Every single one of the sessions, we'll go ahead and do some review of materials that I think are important for you to know from a certification standpoint and we'll start each class by reviewing that material. So what a great, great way to start. What did we do in our first class here of Data Center Unified Computing Implementation? Well, we went through the first three modules of the course and we were really focusing on the C-series rack mounted servers and their proper upgrading and implementation and ongoing maintenance. So we were looking at those C-series devices in the first class with the first three modules of the course done. Well, as I said, let's go ahead and jump in and do some review right now of those particulars. And in fact, let me just get up the review slides that I want us to walk through. Uh, I, I hand selected these, some of them I wrote myself. And remember, one of my goals is for you to be able to come into this exam environment and have absolutely no problem with it whatsoever. I want this exam to be an absolute joke for you and that's why we're going to do so many review questions together. All right, here we go. How do you recover from a corrupted BIOS? This was something that we stepped through yesterday go to the keyboard and chat in the correct answer. Use the Cisco Integrated Management Controller console to perform BIOS recovery. Use a bootable BIOS recovery CD. Press F9 during power on to load backup BIOS or replace the BIOS EE prom on the motherboard. Do you remember how we recovered yesterday from that corrupted BIOS situation. Awesome job, awesome job out there in the studio audience, great work. It is indeed to use the Cisco Integrated Management Controller console. And remember, when you go into the graphical user interface, there is indeed the option to recover the BIOS. So we can do this in the graphical user interface that is the integrated management controller on the C-series rack mounted servers. Great job. What is the effect of quiet mode? Do you remember we saw quiet mode was the default yesterday on the C-series device? Yeah, it was the default. What did that mean? What is quiet mode all about? The chassis fan speed is throttled to 2500 RPM until fan sensors come online. It suppresses output of BIOS post messages. The power supply fan is throttled to 4500 RPM until fan sensors come online. Or it suppresses output of video signal until BIOS tests memory. What was that quiet mode? Yeah, our students are doing such an awesome job. It was indeed suppressing output of the BIOS post messages. Remember, we showed you that you could go in to the BIOS on the C-Series device and you could disable quiet mode, no longer making it a default, so you see the text of the BIOS messages upon every boot. So you have the ability to turn off this quiet mode Remember that the quiet mode is indeed a default on the C-Series devices. By the way, my wife often wishes that I had a quiet mode, but unfortunately, as you might guess, there is no such thing for quiet mode with me. 
All right, which element allows the automated provisioning of service profiles? Now we're gonna get into these in great detail. Okay, we're gonna get into these in great detail, but I just wanna know if you remember this from our design class. So service profiles, how can we automatically provision those? And Pete, that's really, really funny. Pete's chatted in a joke for me. I love it. Yeah, very good. Very good. As you might guess, we are going to use templates. Cloning and the creation of templates is how we're going to be able to automate provisioning of new server resources uh, with these service profiles. And we'll be walking you through how to do that in this particular course. Sure, we have VLANs and, and we have Mac pools and resource pools and things like that, but a template is that component that's going to facilitate the automatic provisioning. And finally, what do you think we can, what property can a Nexus 1000V port profile define? Link speed, VLANs, the VM guest operating system, or the switch high availability. We'll see this in great detail in this course, but very, very good. We can indeed, this is a choose one, we can indeed assign the appropriate VLANs for the port with a port profile. And if you didn't remember this from our design course, we will be walking through this in the implementation course as well. All right, great job. So we wanted to start with some review questions. And then we wanna pick up with some new material. Now the goal in today's event is to complete chapter four. So our goal today is to complete chapter four, no problem. And sure enough, in chapter four, we are going to look at the B series hardware. So we're going to now change from a discussion of those C series rack mounted servers. And we're going to begin focusing on here in chapter four, the blade servers from Cisco that we know can be inserted in a chassis. Now, when you are doing your fabric interconnects and when you're doing the chassis and you're doing the blade servers, you're going to want to practice on non-production equipment to make sure that you can properly manage all of these high-end compute resources. Well, I've got some great news for you. We are creating hands-on labs for you. In fact, let me show you where those hands-on labs would be. And let's see, I gotta maximize this so I can log in and then I'll minimize it again so you can see it all. So we go into our campus and we log in. The labs are being created this week. Uh, and yes, Pete, they will be available anytime for you. Okay, so yeah, once we've got them up there, you can go in and enjoy them anytime. And I apologize, they're being created this week. Uh, we'll, we'll get them done quickly. Uh, so, uh, the, the, like I said, they are working hard on them. I'll let you know when they're available. Now, how you're going to find them is to come up here under professional development and go to development paths and we're Epic Live Cisco. And then you'll go into your course page. And this is really funny. Look at that. They don't have me in this course. Huh. I'm the instructor and they don't even have me in the class. That's pretty funny. All right. Well, let me just go to another class like route, for instance, and they all look the same. Okay, up here are your links to get into classes. And remember, when we have the recordings posted, and by tomorrow we should have the first two sessions up here for you in your recorded format, 
you'll be able to access those through these links just right here. And then if you scroll down, this is how you can ask a mentor a question. Keep in mind, you have mentoring that goes with this course. And then down at the bottom, once we get them done this week, you'll have your hands-on labs. Now, I know you're excited for the labs. I am too. Those are going to be so awesome. But you probably want to practice right now, don't you? Sure, you want to start practicing right now. As a matter of fact, wouldn't it be nice if you had an emulated environment that you could literally just go in and practice with any of these UCS technologies in any way, shape, or form that you wanted? Well, guess what? Cisco provides us with a solution for that, and I wanted to start chapter four by literally walking you through how to do this. All righty, let me just get some resources here. All right, here's what you're going to do, okay? Go to Google. So we'll head over to Google. And in Google, we are going to search on, I'll put it in, uh, here's what I'll do. I'll say site cisco.com. So I am restricting my search to cisco.com. Now, what are we going to search for? We're going to search for Cisco Unified Computing System Platform Emulator. This is a free of charge UCS emulator that's going to allow you to go in and practice with the configurations that we're going to be covering today and in subsequent classes. Uh, by the way, I will make this easier for you to find. I will put this link on the blog. Okay, I'll do that tomorrow. So if you go to our tech tips area of our website, you can find the link that way as well. So let's see. It looks like uh, there's the PDF covering the emulator. That's not what I wanted. Let me get this out of quotes. Looks like this, uh, here it is. The UCS emulator download. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah, so if you searched on UCS emulator or download, you'd get here. Okay, so here you have your emulator. Now, by the way, I'm going to walk you through utilizing and setting this up but there are instructions and that's this PDF right here. So the release notes will walk you through the instructions for running the emulator. Notice our, our course is based on the 1.4 general uh, accessibility release of the UCS platform. So I went for this particular file right here. If you're running 2.x of UCS, there's an emulator for that particular version. Okay, so we have two versions of the emulator. Really cool. So here's what you need to do. The first thing that you need in order to take advantage of this is the VMware player. Yeah, the VMware player. And the great news is this is a free download. So you're going to skip over to VMware.com. By the way, if you already have like VMware's workstation, then you don't need the player. But here we're going to go over to the VMware uh, site. And you're going to go to, uh, let's see, products. And in their massive list of products, you're going to find... somewhere in here, the VMware player. 
there it is. It's under a category called free products. So you're going to go ahead and go to the VMware player page. You just got to give them like your username and your email and it's free. Okay, so I want you to download and install this VMware player in order to take advantage of the emulator. You'll also need the appropriate version of Java plugin installed, and that's Java's plugin of version 1.6 or later, and that's obviously available at java.sun.com. So we can skip over to Java and just make sure that we are running the latest version of the Java plugin. I have my Java plugin auto update itself all the time, so I always have the latest greatest version of Java. And the great news is this emulator is going to work just fine with the latest greatest version. So you're not going to have to worry about downgrading your Java to get it to work with this particular product. All right, so we do our homework there. We get the VMware player installed, we get our Java updated, and now we're ready to take advantage of the emulator. So what I've done is I've gone in and I have unzipped the files, or I haven't even done that yet. I wanted to do everything for you here live. So I go in and I go to, I made a UCS folder on my hard drive. Where is it? There it is. So I made a UCS folder on my hard drive and I stored that downloaded emulator package. We use the Freeware 7-zip to extract it and I'm going to extract the files right to here. So if you uh, if if you're looking for a, a, a zipper unzipper app, uh, I highly recommend the Freeware Seven Zip utility, which does all kinds of formats. All right. So notice one of the things that we're unzipping here is a VMware image that we're going to run to go ahead and emulate the UCS equipment. Really, really cool. Yeah, it is a big file. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's like a gig almost in size, the one gig file, because it is a full-blown Linux image that's running uh, the UCS emulator. Okay, so notice what happened. It just created a new folder, and that's all of the unzipped files. By the way, I can now delete this zip package, and now I can go in and there are the files that make up the VM environment. Right here is the Unified Computing uh, Platform Emulator VMX file. And notice this VMX file will go ahead and play in the VMware player. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know what Linux is running. That's a really good question, Pete. Not sure. And Bob says, I see a version 2.0 of this software. Any big difference? The 2.0 is, no, not big differences. Uh, we are basing this course on 1.4, so that's why I downloaded the 1.4 version to be consistent with this class. All right, so here we go. I'm going to double click this VMX file. and it will launch the VM player. And my CPU on this box is now pegged at 100%. Okay, so just keep in mind 
that this thing just absolutely pegged as it runs this VMware image. It says, hey, there's a software update available, uh, VMware Workstation version 8. Uh, as a, they're trying to basically sell me that as an alternative to this free player. I'll just say, remind me later. It says, hey, we've got some tools for Linux that you could update. Remind me later. And now we'll see this particular VMware uh, image booting. Now again, my CPU on this workstation, it's now at 80%. Nope, oh, now it just pegged. So this, this aspect of it is resource intensive, just be aware of that. But the great news is once we get the emulator started and everything, it calms right down. So just be aware of the CPU usage that you're going to have on your workstation with this. Also be aware of the hefty disk space requirements that you're going to have with this particular uh, emulator. So now you can see we're at the starting Cisco Unified Computing Platform Emulator, and this will take a little bit of time. So it's unpacking and installing the actual emulator. We're at 5%, 6%. And again, my CPU is pegged right now. By the way, what's cool about this is, just like any VMware environment, you can go in and you can pause this environment so we don't have to endure this unpack and install every single time. So we can go in and basically pause the VMware environment, so yeah, suspend it. Thank you, Pete. That's the correct language, yeah. We suspend the VM environment so that we can come in and pick up right where we left off. So this painful, long process of installing the UCS platform emulator, this is not necessarily something we have to endure uh, every time. Yeah, Pete's already got the VMware player that he uses all the time, so he's familiar with that. While we're waiting, let me get our module four slides uh, up in the background here, because obviously that's where we're going to go next. And we're 47%, so we're almost up here. All right, almost up. You're going to be really impressed with this. And you've got to love the price tag. This emulator is free of charge for us. Obviously, Cisco is really interested in promoting the power and the great management capabilities we have with the UCS system. So they're very much interested in this getting proliferated out there so people can see just how awesome the UCS is and how easy it is to manage with this graphical user interface the UCS manager. And we're going to use this emulator for demonstrations, obviously. So when there's a particular configuration that we need to see or make inside the UCS manager, I'm going to go ahead and bring that to life utilizing the emulator. So pretty cool. All right, we are almost there, people, 73%. 
Yeah, absolutely. I need a better machine. Absolutely. I need a better machine. And this machine that I'm doing this right now on is burdened already with all the video technologies and classroom software that it's having to run. So this poor machine is heavily burdened, but, uh, but we're almost, we're almost there. Yeah, on a properly equipped machine, in fact, we just finished. On a properly equipped machine, this would go much, much quicker. All right, installation successful. That's always something we want to see. <laughs> yeah. Cisco does need to sponsor a new server for me, yeah. All right, and now here we are starting the UCS Manager and the emulation platform. Now, there are going to be two accounts that we can use to log into this device. There is going to be a CLI login called CLI login, I believe, and the password is CLI login. And that's an account that you can use to access the command line of the UCS system. And then there's a username and password called config that you can use to get the configuration of the emulator so that you can access the graphical user interface. And that's what most of you are going to want to do. But notice how interesting this is. We can practice with the command line of the UCS system in addition to practicing with the GUI of the UCS system. So this emulator is going to allow both of those capabilities. Pretty cool. It will remind us here when it finishes starting, it will remind us of those two login accounts. So we don't have to memorize them. When it finishes here, it'll display those for me on the screen. Remember, one of them is to use the CLI. It's called CLI login. The other account, the config login, is used just to see the, the system. And look at that. Here's just what I was telling you. So user config password config is for the UCSPE, the emulator's configuration. And then CLI user, CLI user is to actually get to the CLI. Okay? So let me show you that. CLI user. Oh, and you got to click into this environment. And now when you click into the player, notice it gives you a reminder right down here, very important, that uh, to get back to your computer, it's control plus alt. Okay, so when we click in the window, we are in the VM environment and we've lost control of our computer now. I've got no mouse, for instance. It's control plus alt in order to get it back. All right, so I'm going to say, let me get out of the way here. I'm going to say CLI user, password CLI user. And now notice we are on the CLI after a moment, we'll be at the CLI. And there we go. So here you can see we are at the Unified Computing CLI. I'll type exit and we'll exit out of the CLI. And we'll now go config. So I type config and the password of config and it says, okay, here are your options. And we have these options, but that's really not what I was interested. What I'm interested in is simply 
this URL right up here. Here is the URL that we can use to get to the graphical user interface. Pretty cool. So we're going to fire up a web browser and we're going to enter in that URL, which is 192.168.187.128. And I got it wrong. 192.168.187.128. There we go. And now you're at what is called the UCS Platform Emulator Control Panel. Pretty cool. Here we can see the home page that we're at, the managed object browser, the XML API documentation, API schema and samples. And look at this. This is your hardware inventory. Your hardware inventory is right here, and you can see that they gave us a pre-configured chassis to experiment with. So we have a chassis, a fabric extender, one server, eight fans, four power supplies, all pre-built for us in this particular chassis. If you want to add particular servers and then particular CPUs and DIMMs and hard drives and I.O. adapters and fans and power supplies, you can take these objects from this window down below and you drag them right up into the emulator environment in order to create additional hardware configurations. So pretty cool. Yeah, isn't this awesome? A drag and drop environment for particular computing service components. So here is a nice hardware catalog that we have to bring in to the environment. Here are your emulator settings. So here are things like the overall summary, the management IP address that we're using. Notice we're set up to use DHCP, but you could have this emulator be statically assigned an IP address if you wanted to. Settings on the fabric uh, interconnect, like the number of uplinks we're going to use, etc. Okay, so when you have your hardware configured just the way you want it, we can go to the USC, uh, UCS Manager Home and notice down here in the lower right, we have our launch button. I get a warning here from Google Chrome that says, do you want to keep this dangerous file? And I say, yep, keep it. And in fact, I'm going to double click it to launch it. And this launches the UCS Manager and you're hard pressed uh, to tell the, the difference. I mean, th this thing is going to look, act, feel just like the UCS manager that we would utilize in production. Now, the login system is disabled. Yeah, there is no security here with the emulator. So just leave a blank username and password and click login. And there we go. We are in the UCS management component. And we can go, for instance, to the popular main topology view. And here we see our fabric interconnects, our chassis, 
and our one server blade that has been input as part of the default equipment configuration. I can expand over here. We can highlight our server and we can examine the disk configuration inside these servers. Notice we have disks in slots one through four. Notice again, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to what equipment and what configurations that you want to build in this emulator. So pretty exciting stuff. So now what we would do when we're done is we would hit exit and leave the UCS manager and we could go ahead and exit from this UCS manager graphical user interface. And then what we could do is we could come out here to the VM and we'd go up to the virtual machine menu and under power, we would suspend the virtual machine. Okay, so that'd be a good way to go. And now when I want to resume that particular VM, I just click on it here, choose play. And after a very, very short delay, it'll get us right back to the state that we were in before. I see my address of 192.168.187. In fact, there it is saved for me. And we're right back in the UCS manager very quickly. In fact, I'm gonna leave it up because we're gonna be using this UCS manager as we conduct the rest of class today. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is a way for you to get your hands on these tools right away as we wait for the great hands-on labs. Now, as you might guess, the hands-on labs that we are creating for you folks, they are on actual equipment. So the hands-on labs are going to be based on actual UCS pods and they will not be based on an emulator, but obviously, the emulator, as you can see, is going to be a great tool for you to utilize in addition to our hands-on labs that we are creating for you.